You know, I'm very glad to be in Florida right now. I'm very glad not to be in uh, uh, Los Angeles. I'm very glad not to be in California, these places that are really locked down. I'm in Florida for TPUSA. I'm going to be giving a speech this afternoon, 4.20 or so Eastern time. Very excited about it. There have been some real rock stars here. Uh, Ron DeSantis spoke yesterday. Ted Cruz spoke yesterday. We've got a bunch of great people coming out today. And, and of course, TPUSA was trending. It always is trending because the left finds something to make a big deal about. And this time, the issue was, here's the headline. Let me tell you the headline. Porn star featured as VIP at TPUSA student conference. I saw that. That was the trend yesterday on Twitter. I said, oh my gosh, they got a porn star speaking at, at TPUSA. So I looked. That was not the case. As always, I don't believe the headline. As always, whenever you see the headline, Charlie Kirk is doing this terrible thing. I said, no, I don't, I don't think that's true. So I looked. And what happened was a porn star decided to attend the conference and she bought her own VIP ticket and she was just showing up to listen to the speakers. And this created two reactions on the right, both of which I think were wrong. So there was the very wrong reaction, which was, hey, porn is great. If that's true freedom, we need to be the cool party. We need to endorse porn and, and drugs and stuff. And that's awesome. And that's going to be the party of the future. Yeah. And porn's nothing more American than apple pie. Okay. So that's obviously a ridiculous libertine point of view. Then there was the more conservative point of view, which is this is you know, terrible. This is awful. There was a lot of invective sent against this porn lady, people calling her all sorts of terrible names and saying she needs to be shunned from society and shouldn't show her face anywhere. And uh, I think that reaction was a little, a little off as well. I think there actually was a, a third way here that the conservatives should have pursued. <laughs> and it's this. Had this porn lady been a speaker, had this porn lady had a booth to do what? We don't know at, at the conference. Had this porn lady been making a big nuisance of herself and making a big show of herself and trying to become a leader or a speaker or a focus of a conservative summit, that would be a very bad thing. And obviously she, sh she should have been kicked off of the premises. But as far as I can tell, that's not what happened. As far as I can tell, this porn lady showed up. She, was, she used her Christian name. She didn't use her porn name. So no one even who would have heard of her had, had seen anything. And she was just kind of minding her own business and watching the, the conservative speakers. Isn't that good? If she's, if she's just totally minding her own business, she's not trying to recruit anybody for her por pornography business. Isn't that good? Don't we want that to happen? I just, I felt that the invective sent against this woman was really misplaced because I got to tell you, something tells me that if you work in pornography, if you're a prostitute or a, or a porn actress, you probably don't have the strongest sense of self-dignity. You probably don't have the strongest feelings of self-worth. And to be called all sorts of names and to be told that you're the root of all evil in society, I don't think that's very nice. I don't think it's nice to speak in a harsh, vulgar way to women ever, whether it's a prostitute or a princess. I don't think that's right. And I also just think if this woman, she, she's still working in pornography, but she's clearly interested by some conservative arguments. And maybe she's only right now gone through like the shallow conservative arguments, but she's obviously interested. If I can get her into a room where she hears conservative speakers, where she hears me give a speech about how porn is bad and you shouldn't be in the industry and if you're in it, you should get out. And if you're supporting it, you should stop supporting it. And if you are a legislator, you should restrict it or even ban it outright. If she can hear those arguments and maybe be persuaded, I think that would be a good thing. I, I, just, I know that when conservatives call for a big tent party, 99 times out of 100, what that means is they want to just get rid of all of our standards and they want to just become Democrats light, if, if light, or just identical to the Democratic Party and, and not have any boundaries at all. I know that's how that works a lot of the time. But the good version of a big tent party is we have these standards. We hate porn, among other things. You can't do that. There's no spot for that in the conservative movement. But there is a spot for you if you want to get out of it. This is, the, look, obviously, I've been talking about Speechless for a very long time, which is available now for order. 
I don't think there is anybody in the conservative movement who has been more vocal about the need for standards, about the need to suppress vice, about the need to stop saying that you can just say and do whatever you want all the time. Okay, we certainly need standards. But the point of standards is not to kick everybody out. The point of standards is not to be insular and small and and exclusive or exclusionary. The point of standards is to bring as many people as possible along to hold themselves to a higher standard of speech and conduct. And so I just, I'm obviously much more sympathetic to the point of view that, you know, these porn stars need to be cast into outer darkness where there's wailing and gnashing of teeth. But that actually isn't my view. My view is that porn needs to be cast into the outer darkness. And the people who are caught up in the industry, especially the women who generally don't come from great backgrounds and haven't had a great life, they need to be welcomed in and they need to be given the arguments as to why this is terrible. And they need, to, I think it would be good to elevate their, their political views. And, and so I just think the invective, the meanness, the, we, we got to ditch that sort of thing and, and really use standards for their true purpose which is elevating individuals and elevating society. Hey, stop. I'm really glad that you enjoyed all that terrible right-wing misinformation that I, I just was spreading you know, recklessly around the internet. If you want even more of that reckless misinformation, go check out the full episode, uh, which is available now on this channel. It's also available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play, all over the place at The Michael Knowles Show. And you can also order my book, chock full of deplorable, terrible, right-wing misinformation. Go uh, get that too. That's Speechless. We'll see you next time.